The main platform on which VR audio is experienced is headphones. Um, pretty much everything right now is focused on that headphone market. And binaural basically refers to audio that has been created specifically to mimic the way that your ears hear audio in real life. So you're listening to it back over headphones, ideally, so that there's no interference from any other sources or any other sound between the sound that's coming out of the speaker and hitting your ear. And we can use a lot of different information, um, all, all the things just listed, things like time differences between hitting each ear, level differences, and some other cues relating to the shape of your ear and things of that nature. And all that's basically baked down into an audio file. And what you get is a, a audio experience that mimics what you're hearing in the real world so that if something is recorded as being behind you, then you can experience hearing it behind you based on the way that it's supposed to hit your ears. So our microphone takes advantage of that uh, that principle, but then expands on it because binaural is is fixed. You're looking in a specific direction, and what we do is basically allow you to take binaural content and turn your head and look around, which is a very important component of 360 video. 360 video wouldn't be 360 video without looking around, and so we figured audio needed to follow suit. If you look at Pi 171 and all the standards going around. Uh, bass is still mono uh, because bass frequencies are low frequencies that have longer wavelength and they encompass you they're all around you so yeah he's working uh, we've been working on uh, directional bass in our own ways but uh, for the time being bass is mono and it adds a real sense of immersion uh, so all the complex things about binaural and spatial all that doesn't apply to bass, so that makes your life simpler. But in terms of mixing, um, as uh, he pointed out, you don't hear the air conditioner sound right now, or you're you're blocking it out, or uh, the sound of that projector. Sorry for pointing that out. Um, uh, all that will be in in recording from those mics. But if you're using the sub pack for mixing and mastering, you can cut out all that. Uh, all, all those extra environmental sounds that you don't want to be there or you can use it to add those sounds to add some sense of realism if people want to focus that if it's in the mix. The nice thing about a really elegant narrative design is you're giving us the ability to mix in a time domain. And so you're choosing at which point certain events in the sonic space happen. And so that's actually a really important when we're thinking about composing for VR, because you're thinking about an entire immersive sound field. We're not talking about a very specific field of view or a, a very specific field of audition. You can have visual and audio stimulus come from absolutely any direction. And especially for first time VR users, that's like automatic, like cognitive overload. People are overwhelmed. So. If you can construct narratives in such a way that you guide people using video, visual cues, or sound through very specific moments, you can give them narr narrative moments in a very immersive space. And so what we want to avoid is everything happening all the time from every direction. And I know a lot of you think, oh, 360 is amazing. Someone is looking over here, and they're going to hear something, and it's going to cause them to turn around. If it's their first time in VR, that trick probably doesn't work. They're so overwhelmed, they're probably tuning out the sound just to focus on what they're absorbing visually. We love to give people audio cues and we will do it all day, but it works best if we can totally synergize with the visuals. So think about constructing your narratives in such a way that you're guiding people through this entire immersive sound field and you're causing them to turn around and notice interesting things visually and audibly giving them space to explore. But if you put them in the middle of a battlefield, you can't expect that they're gonna look in any direction more likely than any other direction because you're giving them spectacles all around them. So really like choose where your sort of spectacles happen, but space them out in a way that you can't do in a sort of 2D previously rendered media. So I mean like pick your moments. Stereo has a lot of width 
to it in the recordings. So actually spatializing stereo sources so that they have more width in the 3D sound field uh, can be really useful. It, it basically comes down to it's actually two mono sources, but the recording just has more width inherently in it, so it's a little more useful. Um, that's one for sound design. Uh, I mean, obviously, still for music, um, though I guess some would argue that with VR audio, um, music and stereo work sometimes, um, but it's a lot more effective if it's actually diegetic or part of the world. Thank you.